are continuing a project that we had started two Wednesdays ago. If you weren't with us, not a problem. I'm gonna catch you up right now. What we did was we read a book called Cezanne and the Apple Boy. I will link that below so that you can check out the book. What we did after that was we drew some simple apple shapes. We learned that anything not alive would be a still life. We're drawing apples, they are not alive. So we call that a still life. You do have a choice. You can use white paper to draw your shapes or you can find some colored construction paper that you might have. Remember, as always, use what you have in the house. When we draw our apple shapes, apples are not perfect circles. Check it out. They're lumpy, they're bumpy. Some are big, some are small. So keep that in mind when you are making your shapes that they're probably not gonna be perfect circles. That might not even look like an apple if it's a perfect circle. All right, so just some roundish kind of shapes. Same thing if you're doing it on your construction paper, just some type of round shape. I'm gonna do one on each. And the reason that I'm using different colors is because you notice that when you look at apples, they might have all these different kinds of colors in it. Or you might wanna show different kinds of apples. A Red Delicious, your Granny Smith. So have fun choosing your colors, but once you have some really nice round shapes on there, we are ready to add color. As always, you have a choice. I showed us these oil pastels last week. A lot of times I hear from us, oh, Mrs. Weber, I got a cool art set for my birthday, and it has all this stuff in it. Well, usually they come with these oil pastels. So don't be afraid to whip them out if you have some. They work just like crayons, except the cool thing is you can use your finger and you can rub them. Maybe you don't have things like this in your house, but maybe you have a special day coming up. Like maybe you celebrate Christmas or maybe you have a birthday. This would be a great thing to ask for. I love asking for art supplies for my birthday or for Christmas or even for Hanukkah. You can color in your shapes using the colors that you think might match your apples. So maybe you wanna put some yellow and green on your Granny Smith and you can go outside of the lines. It's okay, you'll see why later. Right, so just kind of add some colors into there. Whether you're using marker or crayon, it does not matter. You can just go ahead and fill it in. Same thing with my white paper. Maybe you're not using construction paper. Maybe it's just white. In that case, you're really gonna need to color in the whole entire shape. So again, same thing. We've been talking about this a lot, trying to use more than one color whenever you are coloring something. All right, so fill it up, have fun. Whenever you're done with that, we're gonna move to the next step, which will be cutting them out. Okay, so I finished adding my color onto mine. The next step is we are gonna cut these out really neatly so that anything that got outside of the lines will not even be seen. That's why I said it's okay to go outside of the lines. Now, when you are cutting, one hand is doing all the work, right? That's the hand with the scissors. It's gonna open and close, open and close. This is your lazy hand. It doesn't do anything. All it does is it holds the paper and it turns it where the scissors need to go. All right, so I'm gonna open and close my scissors while taking my lazy hand and using that to just turn. That's all your hand does, the lazy hand. Your hand with the scissor does all of the work. Take your time, cut them out nice and neat, and keep them in a pile so they don't go anywhere. Go ahead. Okay, I have my apple shapes. You could do as many as you'd like. You could do one, you could do two, you can do 10. That's your choice as the artist. Once you have your apples, we're gonna be ready for our next step, which would be to put them on our artwork. You can find yourself a white piece of paper, and on here you have a few options. One, we do wanna show a table, but it's gonna be your choice on what the table looks like. If you were with me on our Thanksgiving project, we actually already learned about making a table, but we're gonna keep it simple today. All I'm gonna do is make one horizontal side to side line from one side of my paper all the way to the other. Now I'm keeping it in the middle here, right? Not all the way up here, not all the way down there, in the middle, and I'm going all the way across. Go ahead. The next step if you wanna have some fun with this is to add maybe a tablecloth. Maybe you have a fancy tablecloth with bright colors or it's rainbow. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is find your corner and we're gonna make a line from your first line to your corner. We call this a diagonal. It's gonna look like a little mountain or a roof. So you're going to your corner somewhere over there. If it's up here or over there, that's okay. 
Now we're gonna make a matching line on the other side. So I'm gonna start at my long line and I'm gonna go down to my corner. I always love making an invisible version first so that my brain can see what I'm doing. All right, so there is my tablecloth. Now for back here, you can really do anything you would like. You can add a window to the outdoors. You can add a picture of your family or a pet. You can do anything you want. This is gonna be the wall, right? So this is your table and this is your wall. I feel like making my tablecloth really fun, so I might make some patterns on it. What is a pattern? A pattern is anything that repeats over and over. So maybe I wanna make a pattern of stripes Maybe inside of my stripes, I wanna add something. So maybe it has polka dots on it, right? So I would repeat that all over. Maybe my pattern is going to be a stripe with polka dots, then a stripe with lines, right? So if we're talking about patterns, it would repeat, right? Dashed line, circle, dashed line, circles. Then what would come next? dashed line. Now remember, don't copy my ideas. You are your own artist. Maybe you just want one solid color table. I feel like having fun with it, making it really bright. All right, I have my markers. I'm ready to start coloring my table mat. And you know, you can really use all of the colors in the rainbow. But today, I'm just going to use my primary colors which are colors that you cannot make. You have to go to the store and buy these colors, red, yellow, and blue. But some of us might already know that once we buy these colors, we could do something really cool with them. We can mix together our primaries and make brand new colors that we call secondaries. We'll learn more about that another day. So go ahead, color neatly any way you want to. Maybe again, your table is just one color. Maybe you did a tablecloth. Maybe you are making placemats or little plates. I don't know. Have fun with it. Go ahead, add any color you might want. We'll meet back in a moment. Okay, so I like mine just the way it is. Once you have your table just the way you like it, we are ready to add our fruit. Remember, this is a still life. So any picture that shows something not alive, we would call a still life. Okay, now you get to decide how you want them to look. Do you want them all spread out all over the table? Do you want them in a pile, in a bunch? Do you want them to have an overlap? So maybe those two are in the back and this one is in the front. Do you want one rolling over on its side like it's about to fall off the table? Have fun, decide how you wanna lay these out. And when you have them laid out, you can use any type of glue or tape to put them in their spot. Let's go ahead and do that. So we are almost done here. There's one last step that we're gonna do and that's gonna to be to add the stems onto our apple. And this part really makes them come to life. So we're gonna find somewhere where you want the stem. Remember, if your apple's rolling over, then maybe your stem ended up down here. If your apple's standing straight up, then maybe the stem is on the top of it. So you decide where your stem goes. And we're gonna start with a smiley face line. Now this one's gonna be rolling over, so what I'm gonna do is turn it, and I'm gonna make my smiley face line on the side of it to show that it rolled over to come back to this one and I'm gonna make another one right there. What are we missing? The stem. This part's easy. Just start from your smiley face line and go right off the edge. That's important. Go to the edge and off of it. Okay, go to the edge of your apple and off of it. Look at that. Now it looks like the apples are sitting on the table in the front and it looks like we have a wall in the back. Remember, you can decorate this any way you want. I can't wait to see the choices that you make with how many apples you have, what your table looks like, and even if you decide to do something in the background. All right, as always, have fun. Show me your work if you can. And I can't wait to see what you did. Bye.